one thing I want you to understand, there is no mungiki. My, what is happening is that there is a political class, and that is what I'm, I'm really addressing. Because I remember those days of um, around 2000, uh, 2001, Raira used me to go and throw stones. And uh, James Orengo, Raira, Beth Mogo, they had an organization they were calling Mageuzi. And I was part of Mageuzi. We threw stones. We did up and runs, uh, down and runs. We also had Wangari Madai in Karura Forest. Then we are just young boys. I'm wondering again, the same same people, about 20 years ago, 20 years, are still using us, calling us young people, to go and throw stones because of their interest. The, whatever you saw with Maina Jenga, Maina Jenga is my first cousin. His mother and my father, we come from the same, we started Mungeki together. And uh, I'm so disappointed, so disgusted to see Maina again looked in into the interest of the Uhuru Kenyatta, the Uhuru family, the Uginga family, and the Ruto and the Moi family. Because all this is about, they are safeguarding their interests. It's not that they're important, they, they, need, they, they need to see any change in this country. Raida was there with Uhuru when the Unka rose up. So I don't think Ruto can do magic now to bring 200 shillings unka to 180 or to 120. There's nothing Ruto can do in 100 days or in one year. There's nothing he can do. But they understand the politics behind the politics. It is not about Maina Jenga. Maina Jenga or the Mungeke name is being used as a dog to back so that they can be listened to. You see, like uh, when they went to Kamukonji, Maina was given prominence. When they went to Nyeri, Maina was given prominence. Because they wanted to attract the international community to see this animal called Mungiki is coming back and is going to create havoc in this country. They were not interested in Maina. And when Maina was arrested, they all disappeared. I didn't see them again. When Maina was taken to court, they were not there. When Maina disappeared again, it's us who pushed for Maina to be resurfaced. Where did they go? It is all about using this gentleman. It is all about trying to use him for political gains. Maina will not be invited into the talks that they have started. They are going to start them next week. You never see Maina there. Maina will be told to go and sit around and have a cup of tea as the leaders now sit down. He will not be a leader by then. He will be a criminal. They will just say that's a criminal who needs to be taken aside or be put aside. That is very unfortunate and that is what we want to address. That the young people of whatever age, even if you are 70 years and you want yourself to be a young person, you're a young person, that this trend of using people, this trend of misusing characters, this trend of characters as nations has to come to an end. Raira was in the government, Uru was in the government, Ruto has been in the government. They know what they are doing. They know the up and downs, the, the hideouts, the movings, and everything that is happening. It's not happening for the interest of the common man. There's nothing they're doing for the common man. It's about, Raida has an investment, and they think Ruto is crushing them. Um, when you saw, during the campaigns, remember Ruto telling, telling uh, Uhuru, Bora usiwe wangu, because there was that story that they are going to arrest the son of Ruto and then persecute him. Now see Ruto, has, what has done? He has sent police, not even attempting, not even threatening, he has sent police to go, uh, to invade in Uhuru's son house. This is political gimmicks. Now Uhuru is not in the country. They have gone to the children. Raira is not is in, in uh, UK. They are going now to negotiate for their oil company, for their gas companies, for the, for the interest, for the real estate farms that they have, for the cake of the nation. It is not about the interest of this country. They have no interest at all. They have no. If Uhuru was not a good for 10 years, to bring down the prices. What do you think Ruto can do in one year? Even, even if you are given, he's given 20 years, he can't do that thing. The prices of fuel will escalate, prices of food will escalate, and everything will escalate, and Ruto is among them, it's one of them. So let us move, make a course ourselves, and defend our nation from our, from our quarter. It is we who are suffering, it is not them. But when they want you, like now, I remember one day I was told to go and uh, buy against Raira in Kibera by the same people. And when I pushed my agenda, they thought that I'm going just to threaten. And uh, when I pushed the agenda, when I, and I captured the seat, I won the seat, 
They themselves called me again. They told me, uh, step aside, we leave it to him. The enemy, they were sending me to go and fight. And they told me to surrender the seat to him. So that's when I discovered these people are not the enemies. They are brothers. It's about interests. So um, my brother, Maina, whatever he is, is my, is my good friend. We meet. I've been telling him, stop this now. Let us form an agenda. We are capable. Uh, Ruto has fought all his ways, become the president. Kachagwa has fought all his ways, the deputy president. Oginga Raida has fought his way, has become a president, um, uh, uh, the deputy, uh, former prime minister. And we can also forward. We can also move there. We can also be able to make it. If we had Mungiki, Mungiki was powerful. Why being used? Why would, you, why would you allow anybody to come and give you a million dollars to go and throw stones or to take people to the CID headquarters that uh, people are chanting for you? That, that is now not for us. And Kenya has grown up. Kenya has become a better nation. The politics of those days cannot be applied for the policy of this. And we need to have ideas. We need to build ideas, come with fresh ideas that will change this nation. As long as he allows himself to be used by Raida, to be used by Uhuru, remember Uhuru the other day never wanted to see uh, anybody who was a former Mungiki. Remember at one time Ocampo gave me 40 million to just do a signature for Uhuru to be, to be taken to court. It is, you can go and, and uh, Google, you will see that. And uh, I, I said I cannot be able to do that against Uhuru Kenyatta because he was my friend. But immediately the case was withdrawn, I became a, I became a Mungiki. Previously, I was not a Mungiki. When we were working, we were doing with him and we were supporting him. We were not Mungikis. But immediately he sat on the seat, we became Mungiki and he started fighting us. So <laughs> what I can assure you, and I can tell you for sure for free, that unless Maina chats his own way, he will never become anywhere near any leadership. They are the one who have made him never to win a seat in Laikipia. The same people who are now calling him Jamba. They are the same people who finance somebody, who give money to somebody, who go and challenge him. They are the same people who took away his votes. He had won the election. But the same, same people who are using him now, they are the same, same people who send people to go and take away his votes. So for sure, you, won't get, you must chart your own way and get out of politics of psychophancy. You know, what, what I'm, I'm trying to do is to bring that the voice, the voice of reason, the voice of the people to come up. Because the power, the constitution says the power is with the people. They have the supremacy, the, the sovereignty of control of everything. This nation is the people of Kenya. So these people of Kenya have been deprived of that privilege and they are no longer being able to address it. And that's why we are coming up bring up the elders, giving them, them that privilege, that position, taking back the position of control, advisory, and the blessing to the old people, both the Kikuyus, the Luyas, the Kisis, the Kambas, the Kikalenjin, all of them, they come together as council of elders. Then we have the church take its position as the role model to the society, because also the church has been, has decayed, has been in a manner that nobody wants to be associated now with the church. But we are coming back. Also, I'm bringing on board the young people so that they also, the young people can uh, remain and work under the elders and the church and also the government and also empower the government to have a voice, a positive voice. That now we need to have, we don't have to be claiming that we, are not jo we don't have jobs, that young people are jobless because government has never, there's no single government in the world that has ever created jobs. Jobs are created by you who went to school, you who has idea, you who want to do something. That enlightenment, enlightenment, empowerment, and moving forward, bringing these people together so that we can have a cohesive machinery from the elderly to the church to the government to the youth. Then we see in Moro we can be able to do ABCD. And then in Moro we can be able to bring a change. In Nakuru we cannot be, can do this. In uh, Nairobi something can be done. If only we can be able to be um, advised properly and uh, we stop these uh, old people, the old guards, the old politicians who have refused to go home, we tell them, go home now. We have a new crop, a crop that is ready to work, is ready to change this nation, is ready to make another, mi another mileage towards improving and making a, a country that everybody would want to be associated. I've been to Europe. I've been to America, I've been to Australia, and you can see, if you go to like the places like Canada, 
the economy of Canada is driven by young people. And if you go to Europe, the same thing. The economy is being run by the young people. But here we find the old people are the ones who are running the economy, and they have refused to go. So you go to church, you find also the very old people are so run, also running the church. The church no, is, is, being, is never, no longer run, run by young people. The politics is only that now politics now, people, young people have gotten in. But all circles of life must be addressed. The church must be addressed. The, all, the, uh, the politics, must, politicians must be addressed. The business circle, young people need to be told, to be taught how to do business, not to rely on the government. There's no government in the world that creates. Don't wait because you voted for, uh, for Ruto, Ruto that you're going to create a, a business opportunity. There's no business opportunity from Ruto. There's no job from Ruto. Business opportunities are within your brain, between your two ears. That is where we have a business opportunity. That is where we have an employment. That is where we have an empowerment. And we can make it. I will use. I came from a poor family in Molo and uh, went to Nairobi. I became a chokura at some point. I became a thief at some point. At another point, I became a maga. I used to sell changa. I stole my yuana. I've been to prison 52 times because of all those fake, um, bad, 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 bad uh, things I used to do. But all that did not hinder me from becoming what I am today. Today, I am a real estate. I can call myself a mogul, a real estate mogul. I am in business, transport business. I'm in um, import, import businesses all over the world. I have businesses in Australia, businesses in the UK, businesses in Israel, businesses in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. Yet, at some point, 1998, 1999, I was at Chokora in Dandora dumping site. So when I found that the old politicians, they only use you. And after using you, they will dump you. When I realized that I need to change my direction, I changed my direction. And now I am not a poor person. I am a person who goes home a rich person. Thank you.